request uh, our director in charge, Dr. Tripathi, to deliver the welcome address. Good afternoon. It's my, it's my pleasant duty to invite all to this second Dr. B. Kumar Swami endowment lecture. It, it was on 4th of March 2016 that Dr. Kumar Swami left us. It was a tragic accident and in, in his remembrance we are holding this endowment lectures once every year. This is not only in remembrance of Dr. Kumar Sami, but also it is also an academic exercise for us. And uh, this talk is being, this oration is being given by Dr. Eric Ottison, Director, NTD Support Center, Task Force for Global Health USA. So it's my pleasant duty to welcome you, sir, for this memorial function, sir. And it's also my pleasant duty to welcome all the other dignitaries. <laughs> On the dais, uh, Dr. Uh, Sriram Tripathi, former DGICMR, and a former director of this institute as well. Dr. Narayanan, also former director of NRT, Chennai. Also, my pleasant duty to invite for this memorial function all the other dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Shantar, uh, then Dr. Uh, Dr. Manoharan, Dr. Raj Kupal, uh, Dr. Rema Majib, uh, Dr. Arjun, Dr. Jawar, and all uh, Dr. Nalni, uh, Dr. Madhula Datta, Dr. Rema Matthew, Dr. Amaya, and all other who have come for to attend this function. Dr. Uh, Dr. I think Dr. Uma? Uma, yes. yes. So welcome to all and all the staff of the NIRT as well for this function. I hand over the mic once again to Dr. Ramli for continuation of the function. Thank you, sir. So now we, are, uh, we also have two video messages, one from Dr. Uh, Soumya Swaminathan and also do from doc Professor Dr. KVT Thruvangra. I would like to play it for, uh, for this function. Good morning, everybody. Namaskaram and greetings from WHO Geneva. My special namaskarams to Professor KVT, sir, who has been the teacher, philosopher, mentor, guide and guru for many people in this room and continues to be an inspiration at this age. I would like to start by paying homage and tributes to Dr. V. Kumaraswamy, in whose memory a book has been brought out on lymphatic filariasis with many eminent authors and many of whom are present in this room. Dr. Kumaraswamy was a unique person and I don't need to describe his qualities to all of you, who each of you knew him well and knew him in his different capacities as a researcher, as an academic, as a friend, as a mentor, as a guide, and as a family member. For many of us uh, in TRC, later NIRT, uh, Imagining TRC without Dr. Kumaraswamy is practically impossible. 
especially for me because from the day I entered, in fact, I entered TRC because of Dr. Kumaraswamy, whom I met in Tamil Nadu hospital one day when he had come to give a talk. Um, and one of my colleagues in Tamil Nadu hospital turned around to me and said, this man is going to win a Nobel Prize one day for his contributions. And uh, I got talking with Dr. Kumaraswamy about my research interests and I said, you know, I was not very satisfied with what I was doing at that point. And uh, he said, why don't you come along to TRC? Come and meet some people there and also meet the new DG, Dr. S.P. Tripathi. He had just been appointed as DG and he happened to be in Chennai on those days. And I came along and met him and uh, he offered me a supernumerary position as a returning scientist. And that's how my career in uh, TRC began. So really, I owe my career in research in India in tuberculosis to Dr. Kumaraswamy because without that initial uh, advice from him, uh, life could have been different. And I, I'm sure that he touched many lives in the same way. He gave advice to people, no matter who they were. I mean, you've seen people in his room, you know, ranging from humble, uh, you know, cleaners and drivers and cooks asking for advice on their personal matters to students from all over Chennai and, and uh, in fact all over India, to mid-level career scientists. It's very often that I have gone to him for advice, especially when I was feeling down, I was feeling depressed, and I was having problems, I would go to him. And he would invariably give you the right advice, very balanced perspective, and also with a sense of humor. And you'd always come out of his room cheered up. And he was always ready for a laugh, ready for a joke, ready for a, um, a practical uh, joke, April Fool's Day. There are innumerable occasions when his wit and uh, his sense of humor and the way he approached life, uh, I think it was a very good philosophy not to take life seriously all the time, but really to enjoy every minute. And, um, you know, he could have contributed a lot more if he had been with us today, but destiny um, snatched him away from us uh, over two years of, ago now, along with his uh, very loving and affectionate wife, uh, Lakshmi, and his mother. Um, but he has left behind a legacy uh, for the world, and I think that's what's being celebrated today. I'm, I'm so happy that Dr. Eric Otterson is giving the oration and that many luminaries in the field of uh, lymphatic filariasis and medical research have, have gathered here, and that a book has been produced uh, in his uh, memory and as a tribute to the work that he did with many colleagues across the world to advance the field of lymphatic filariasis. In fact, if India is dreaming, and many countries around the world are dreaming of eliminating filariasis today, it's in a large part due to the work done by Dr. Kumaraswamy and the many other colleagues who are in the room and not in the room with whom he collaborated, ranging from studies on clinical trials of drugs to epidemiology to, to management of morbidity to the uh, pathogenesis. I still remember the day when he was so excited. I met him in the corridor of TRC and he said, guess what? The ultrasounds that we are doing now, the lymph nodes uh, show the dancing worm sign. And uh, it was for the first time that uh, that had been demonstrated, and it changed the paradigm of how we think about uh, filariasis pathology. Today, he worked on immunology. I mean, I think his expertise really spanned across all disciplines of medical science that you can think of. So it's something to be proud of, something to celebrate, and also something to emulate for each one of us, because if our research and our science doesn't make a difference to the common man or to people suffering from these especially neglected diseases, then I feel that it's incomplete. And so we have to bridge this gap between science and policy that Dr. Kumaraswamy did so well and so brilliantly. I really thank uh, especially Dr. Raj Sekaran for having put together and compiled this book and for having been persistent in his reminders to, to, to me to write the foreword and of course Professor KVT sir for having guided this process 
and all the authors who have contributed and uh, Dr. C.P. Ramachandran and, and Dr. Suma and, and many, many, many others uh, who have contributed not only to the book but really to the work on filariasis all these years. His memory would be best served when we eliminate lymphatic filariasis and the day that we do that in India would be a day in which his soul would rejoice. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Friends, I thank the organizers of this meeting, which is held in memory of Dr. Kumar Sami and an eminent scientist, Dr. Artisan, is going to give the second lecture in memory of Dr. Kumar Sami. I'm sorry I'm not able to come in person because of unavoidable reasons. Dr. Kumar Sami, many of us know, was a unique personality, keen scientist, absolutely clear in what he said and what he did, and he has, was acceptable to everyone with whom he moved. His work is not often realized, which went into an unusual realm. He and Dr. in charge of a sonology division, Dr. Suresh, discovered the adult filarial worm, the scrotum of a male patient, and they described it as the dance of the filaria. In other words, till that time, the adult worm had not been seen. It always had the larvae which were discovered in the peripheral blood. I would like to also say that Kumar Sami did a lot of work, not only in India, in, as a member of a scientific group in Africa, Indonesia and so on, where he made a very good impression about his work and his ability to help in the international field in curbing, controlling filarial disease. I would like to also say that we have here an extremely fine scientist, a person who has been in India, who has been working in this centre, Dr. Archison, and his work is now one of the finest areas of research done in filarial disease. His area of interest is also wider in the less well-known tropical diseases. I must say that Dr. Rajsekhar, who is the person who has edited a book on filarial disease to be released today, also the understudy for Kumar Sami and he did extremely well to make his mentor proud in the way he worked on filarial disease and obtained the PhD in filarial disease. I must say that this book of Drasaka is given a foreword by the Deputy Director General of the WHO, Dr. Soumya, who was the director of this institute earlier and also Director General of the ICM board. I must say also the deep interest with Dr. Tirpati and his colleagues have taken in helping to organize this meeting and helping in the conduct of study in this center in filarial disease. I thank you once again for being able to come if only I could, but I am not able to. So I thank you just for the invitation for the meeting and my best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Okay. So now I think uh, the absence has not been felt here. So with this message, like now we will go on to the meeting. And now I request uh, former DG, Dr. Rastrika, uh, Dr. SPT, and uh, former uh, director of this institute to introduce Dr. Eric Cortison to this audience. This is first day. I'm in prior agreement with whatever common service so far. Best persons one could think of. Achieved quite a lot in the area that we were. Was friendly and acceptable to all of us. And uh, I'm sure all of us here have something good to say about him. 
I am very happy that I was the one who recruited him to work in the center and allotted him to work on pyelidiasis. This decision I have never regretted. I, I think it was one of the best decisions I have ever made because of all the developments that took place and the successes of the programs that he had. Now, as far as Dr. Otteson is concerned, he is a, as you know, he is a U.S. citizen who graduated in 1970 and something new I learned that he, he is a diplomat of pediatric uh, board of America. So, I had no idea that uh, his specialization was also in, including pediatrics. Now, he has held several positions in uh, starting with Duke University Medical Center, many sections of National Institute of Health, uh, including NIAID, National Institute of uh, Allergy and Infectious Diseases, many other divisions, uh, senior investigator, laboratory of parasitic diseases, clinical parasitic head. He has worked in WHO for several years. Come consulted umpteen times. Now, I, I, I find that uh, many other positions he held is now uh, chief technical advisor in NVISA, which is uh, looking after neglected tropical diseases control program and member of several. Honor, honors and special recognitions have been awarded for from many organizations and these are several boards, committees of WHO, his main specialization is in malariasis, oncocytiasis, tropical diseases. Particularly now, he has got a wider responsibility. He has been closely associated with Kumar Swami. Both of them <coughs> from the team, which uh, has produced wonderful results, which uh, you are already aware of, and I am sure going to uh, hear about shortly. Now, I don't want to take too much of your time. How I want to all I want to say is that here is a man who is outstanding in the areas he worked in, whatever subject he has worked in, he has done excellent job. He has achieved quite a lot. He is one of the most well-known persons in medical research. I have been associated with him in the beginning when we started the study of uh, static filariasis. I, I have maintained that association with him for several years. I was out of touch for the last few years and today I was delighted to have an opportunity of uh, visiting him and uh, have an opportunity of listening to him. Lecture that is going to be short. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for introducing uh, Dr. Eric Otterson. So now we are waiting to hear from Dr. Eric Otterson to deliver his second oration for Dr. Kumar Swam. But uh, well, it's really the, when we hear uh, when we hear the introductions of uh, Dr. Kumar Swamy from uh, Dr. Somaya, Dr. KBT, and Dr. Tripathi. It's really very humbling to be uh, uh, sharing the same podium because he's such an incomparable uh, person. Kumar Swamy is a co colleague, co-worker, and mentor. And normally I, I think I'd like to say it's a real pleasure to be here because it is a pleasure to be back at TRC. But I also feel like uh, I'm visiting Kumar Swami's uh, house, and uh, he's not home uh, anymore. And 
and uh, or at least not uh, uh, physically. But I think his spirit is certainly very much here with all of us. And I think that's what brings everybody here this afternoon. Everybody knows just uh, how, how special uh, Kumar Sony was. And before I go into the lecture part, I also want to make just a few comments. One is that, uh, as Dr. Uh, Tripathi uh, just indicated, this is something that we've been doing. We've been working together for, for uh, 40 years. Uh, my chief uh, from the National Institutes of Health back in 1976 wrote to ICMR and was interested in uh, doing, uh, having our unit do some work on uh, immunology and filariasis. I'd been out in the Pacific uh, doing some studies of lymphatic filariasis and there had seen the down regulation, the uh, immunoregulatory uh, effects of uh, filarial disease, but we were interested in looking at the other end of a clinical spectrum that we suspected was tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So uh, ICMR was asked, where could we possibly uh, work together on something uh, on uh, tropical eosinophilia? And uh, uh, since Dr. Tripathi had, was uh, one of the most well-schooled immunologists at the time, having spent a, a time in Saranac Lake at the Tuberculosis Center in, uh, in the US, uh, the DG said, well, I think uh, Madras would be the place for you to uh, work. And so he arranged, so it was a, a high level uh, visit from our uh, National Institutes of Health to Dr. Tripathi here. They established a linkage that then I followed uh, on a couple of years later. And Dr. Kumar Swami was appointed, uh, uh, his being a, um, an ICMR uh, uh, talent scholar, and when he f uh, finished up uh, with his commitments at Stanley, he came to join the TRC and was uh, 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 assigned to work with me on filariasis. Uh, that was, so the clinical part, actually the, the lab part came from Dr. Tripathi, the clinical part came from Dr. Thiravengadam, uh, and uh, so that's the, that was the first working. Then as uh, the, our linkages developed over time, um, uh, Dr. Vijaya Shakran became a very uh, key person with his uh, uh, unit uh, at GH. And then uh, later on with subsequent directors, Dr. Prabhaka, uh, Dr. Narayanan, and, and uh, then so many others in the, in the community, going down to Tanjavur with Dr. Jamal, Dr. Mo um, uh, the, uh, Dr. Carr up in Orisa, uh, Dr. Shinoy in Kerala. I mean, this was a, uh, a unit, and Dr. Manokaran actually also with Jamal. The, this was a real uh, hotbed of intellectual approach to lymphatic filariasis. And I would say that um, uh, it, in the 1970s, you know, filariasis was known and was of, uh, of importance but it was really very much neglected, not only here in India, but certainly everywhere else in the world. And, uh, and there wasn't really hope for a, a great deal of change. But I think Dr. Kumaraswamy's appointment uh, to, uh, uh, to work uh, in this area, his involvement with his, his clinical skills, his very close relationship with all the uh, finest um, clinicians and mentors, the hospital and research awards, uh, uh, and his patients who were so devoted to him. Uh, really, Dr. Kumar Swami changed uh, all of that. And uh, through his hosting, a long stream of, uh, of uh, Indians and Americans coming through the center here, uh, it brought uh, some light on clarifying some of the key mechanisms and, of pathogenesis of filariasis, uh, including the allergic hyper-responsiveness uh, and the control of that, the down-regulated immune system, uh, the cell-mediated immune system back in the 1970s and 80s, uh, prenatal sensitization to uh, parasite antigens, the, the linkage between IgE and IgG4 responses in filaria and other helminth infections, uh, determinants of eosinophilia and all these other various uh, pathogenetic issues that uh, had been looked at that uh, were looked at over time, literally feeding, or working across the bridge established by Dr. Kumar Swami.
but just as important as his basic science were the clinical advances uh, made in, sort of in revolutionizing the approach to lymphedema uh, with his collaborators from, uh, from Europe and the Americas, uh, totally demonstrating that this was not a hopeless condition, but something that could be uh, uh, done about, uh, done with him. And then, of course, the uh, seminal work uh, uh, with uh, Professor Chenoy showing that filariasis is actually a, a, an infection of children. And there's pathology in children, but you don't see that pathology until adults. You have the subclinical stage where lymphatic uh, uh, filaria, uh, uh, lymphatic function uh, is damaged by the filariasis. And this was extremely important, and actually then allowing the further studies of the uh, effectiveness of treatment on this thing it makes a dramatic uh, impact on the disease in terms of its long-term progression. And there are other many things, the, the first use of ivermectin, uh, I'm going to run over some of these again later, but the first use of the drug would have filariasis, the two drug therapy, all these things were the things that underlay the, uh, the global program to eliminate uh, lymphatic filariasis. Um, but I think the other key thing that just to share with you all for a couple of minutes is just how important he was to the global community after he left uh, TRC. Uh, he was, uh, uh, he was linked up with uh, 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 the government of India to begin with, uh, and WHO and CIRO and Delhi and uh, all of the efforts that they were making towards the NTD, Neglected Tropical Disease Programs, the, uh, the LF Elimination Program. He worked uh, in the U.S. for a while at uh, uh, the Task Force for Global Health where I work. And he was a, he would be a consultant. He was everybody's expertise, tool for uh, anybody who needed anything. You just call Kumaraswamy, and especially if it had to do with India. You call Kumaraswamy, and that's, that's where your first start was. And there really wasn't anything that he wouldn't do. I mean, with a positivity and a cheerfulness, a selflessness and efficiency that really humbled us all. And uh, I think that uh, one of the things that really was so particularly wonderful about him was uh, the way he cared for pa patients, the way he cared for every individual, and exercising leadership, trust, and all of these things. And in fact, I was thinking you could look uh, up almost any positive attribute in a dictionary and then describe, make a whole story about Kumaraswamy from just whatever word you happen to find. So it's a pleasure to uh, have a chance to uh, make those comments. Uh, but now I will turn to uh, some of the uh, science that he left behind or started. So that really is a, a theme that, um, yeah, no, I'll just uh, punch that thing. Uh, and, and my talk then today is called Solving the Problem, the LF Problem, Through Research. This was, and, and Kumar Swami was a researcher at heart. He was a clinician, he was a wonderful friend, he was an enabler, he was everything. But he was a researcher at heart, and I think this is very important. So I have four major points that I want to make uh, during the presentation today. Uh, and this could be on filariasis and the global program to eliminate LF. I want to say that the, the global program was born in research and is sustained today uh, through continuing research, research efforts. Uh, the character of that research has changed, however. And uh, the third key point is to uh, indicate that to succeed, close partnerships and clear research targets uh, must be uh, affirmed. And fourthly, I want to emphasize again that Dr. VK uh, and his team of collaborators are responsible for defining the principles and framework uh, responsible for the success of the global program today. Now, I don't know how many people really know what the global program is, so I have a couple of slides of this. It's the result of a resolution from the World Health Assembly in 1997 with the goal to eliminate lymphatic filariasis as a public health problem. And there are two ways of doing that, stopping the spread of infection and reducing the uh, suffering caused by the disease through morbidity control efforts. In terms of stopping the, or interrupting transmission, the idea was that um, uh, you identify all populations at risk and then you treat the entire population 
uh, these at-risk populations using uh, mass drug administration with two drugs once yearly for four to six years. So this is the basis of uh, everything that the global program uh, uh, focuses on now. And say, well, it's a great idea, but is it working? Well, it's now about uh, 18 years old, 17 years old. And already, you know, this is these are huge numbers in terms of cumulative treatments over that time throughout 67 countries is uh, uh, really s over six billion tablet uh, uh, treatments for the, uh, uh, the uh, LF program alone. And about 500 million people live now in areas where the filariasis is gone, so they're no longer at risk uh, of infection. And in terms of what is going on, all the, there were 72 countries at the beginning of this program there are some of the countries that have already achieved their elimination as a public health problem with certification by WHO. Others are in a surveillance stage. Others have started, finished all the treatments, but not yet in surveillance and so forth. But a lot has gone on. And again, uh, that is, comes back to the achievements that uh, were initiated by Dr. Kumar Swamy and his team. So basically, the other thing I want to make a, a point about is that research is not just one thing. Research really has different components, and you're all familiar with this. Basic research, translational research, operational research. And what's the difference? Well, most of the basic stuff just describes the organism, the, uh, the epidemiology, where it's found, and so forth. Uh, a lot of it laboratory work. Translational is sort of looking at those laboratory, uh, those attributes of the uh, parasite in this case, and identifying tools that might be, uh, you might be able to intervene with to uh, get rid of the problem. And then when you uh, actually have the tools and develop a, uh, a strategy and begin to play out that strategy, you run into problems that are uh, operational in nature, so that you're focused on little uh, troublesome issues that are inhibiting uh, pro program uh, implementation. Now, I want to just go through uh, historically, or fairly quickly at least, uh, some of the um, uh, basic, some of the key research uh, findings in, um, uh, in, in the history of LF. Now, in terms of the basic research, what is it? Uh, the in, in discussion of the parasites really uh, Really, this for the first uh, 90 years, it was the parasite was discovered about 150 years ago, and uh, for the first 90 years, you really were mostly dealt with life cycles, uh, vectors, periodicity, the distribution throughout the world, then uh, also the basic uh, clinical manifestations of lymphedema, elephantiasis, hydrocele, things we know about. Some of the subclinical disease came uh, a little bit uh, after that. And then the pathogenesis is uh, uh, more recent uh, as well, the pathogenesis being two components. One is the immune system has an effect on the lymphatics, but the second is that that effect is complicated by usually bacterial, but super infections uh, that, uh, again, can be managed. Um, and then the clinical and immunological spectrum dealing with the pathogenesis. So basically, this and the more recent uh, definition and sequencing of the filarial genome constitutes most of the basic research. Here I've highlighted areas where these elements here were absolutely hugely contributed to by the work here in TRC by Kumar Swamy and his team. Uh, and uh, I think you know many of these uh, issues. Uh, the, uh, this used to be laboratory immunology, and it was the only old laboratory, these are old slides, uh, that uh, this was the laboratory where the immunology work was done. And there was a lot of good immunology that, uh, that was done, uh, you know, really setting the uh, ground level for much of the work. Then there was tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. Um, where th then there was uh, pulmonary uh, lavage uh, done here, brought here from the uh, National uh, Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute at the NIH, and set up, and actually then Vijay, Dr. Vijayan took over and ran with it. You see that uh, Dr. Kumar, uh, Dr. Uh, Tripathi is uh, staring down one of the tubes, looking in the, uh, the chest of, uh, of this uh, volunteer patient with TPE um, syndrome. 
And the other point I mentioned, just to emphasize how important Dr. Uh, Chinoy uh, was in this absolutely critical uh, discovery of the subclinical LF uh, in children. Well, if th those were all very basic uh, research issues. Now, if you took the, the translational research, there are really two elements of that. One is creating tools, and the other is creating strategies. But so the translational research, if you look at the key things in uh, philoriasis history and tools, probably the most significant thing, it took 90 years for any uh, drug that was an anti, or was a filaricidal drug to be uh, developed. And that was DEC that people are very familiar with. It was uh, uh, in the last, uh, say, 30, 35 years that both ivermectin and albendazole were also found to be uh, effective tools. And all of these have very significant single dose effectiveness. In terms of the diagnostic tools, there are antigen tests uh, for both Brugia and uh, Bancrofti. There are antibody tests and then the uh, xenodiagnosis, the detection of the infection in the vector. And the other key thing in terms of creating tools were tools for uh, uh, approaching the patient with uh, lymphedema and elephantiasis. Or hygiene, social support, antibiotics, and of course uh, development of surgical approaches for hydrocele and also for severe elephantiasis. Again, if we look at what was done by the TRC and its uh, teams, we said already that the first ivermectin was uh, trialed here. The, the two-drug therapy uh, was also uh, an important uh, outcome of the activities here. The antigen test, uh, Dr. Weil was one of the Americans that came through here and spent time here, worked uh, collaboratively, and it was he who uh, worked uh, through the antigen test at the same time uh, that uh, he was working uh, here. And then the, the antibody tests uh, also uh, developed here, utilized here, and much of the patient care activity, again, uh, part of the program here at the, the center. The tools, the, the ward with ivermectin, the GH uh, staff uh, so heavily involved in the uh, ivermectin and the uh, uh, comparative trials that were done over the years. Uh, I gave up trying to put it, references to everything. I mean, there's so many uh, papers that have come from the, um, from the um, uh, center that deal with this. It's just extraordinarily uh, interesting to look back at as I uh, had to do in preparing for this. The tools for patient care greatly changed. The teaching, we have Dr. Suma in this picture. Uh, and of course, Dr. Uh, Ramachandran, who was here last year, our colleague very closely working together with us at WHO and uh, the various tools for morbidity management that were developed. In terms of creating strategies, uh, this is really important because this is then takes us to the point where you go from translational uh, into operational activities. A strategy of mass drug administration, uh, uh, first the, it was first introduced in the 50s, 60s, and 70s using just DEC alone or DEC fortified salt. Uh, a lot of that work done here in India. Then the two drug uh, MDAs came along that uh, were superior to the single drug MDAs. That's albendazole plus either DEC or ivermectin. And then there's the uh, issue of the subclinical lymphatic damage in children that had been described in Kerala that was reversed with these same once yearly doses of medicine in these young children. That's really important. Uh, then um, more recently, there's been a three drug regimen uh, which has, combines all three of these drugs and uh, uh, it is clearly something that's still being investigated right now. In terms of uh, vector control strategies, there was uh, definitely, uh, these were refined and proven effective. These are not filaria specific, but some of the work ha was done here, uh, or at least uh, in Pondicherry uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, Chertelet. Community mobilization in rural and urban areas, impregnated bed nets and curtains, new tools, all of which came together into this global program to eliminate LF. Basically a two drug treatment strategy once a year for at least five years. And again, did, uh, did the TRC have a major role in this? Boy, it sure did.
all of this kind of stuff. These were major, major contributions of uh, TRC. <clears throat> so looking back over the 150 years of LF research, uh, the most recent 20 years has been the time of the global program to eliminate LF. And again, based on the concept of MDA, created in WHO and launched by WHO officially in 2000. I should have said, um, uh, I should have said that a lot of that research work that was done over the years uh, preceding this was uh, coordinated through WHO, the TDR program. Uh, and uh, uh, Kumar Swami played a very important role in that uh, as well. But uh, they uh, tended to keep a focus on filariasis, and that was really helpful to move all the uh, advances forward. But the key thing about this, uh, uh, the development of the program, is that a, it specified a plan with guidelines, a strategic plan and specific guidelines for program managers to follow. So that takes us out of the translational area and puts us into operational. Because as, as countries begin to follow the plan, uh, they learn that the devil was in the details and there were all sorts of problems. Uh, and so the research had to become much more focused on operational, uh, on operational issues. But there were two things that were really very helpful uh, to the global program. The two critical <coughs> elements of success uh, were available. The first is significant donor support for operational research. Now, everybody probably knows lymphatic fluorosis didn't have any money to speak of for anything in implementing. There was no mobilization. There was no uh, international activity. But what money there was, a significant proportion was, uh, was uh, uh, encouraged by the donors to be used for operational research. That is, make sure the, what we know can actually get out and work. Uh, and that is just this focus on operational research is really important. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, DFID, GSK uh, were the early supporters here, the Mechtizan Donation Program, and then USAID more recently. But that's a really important uh, element that many, uh, many uh, uh, disciplines don't have. The other important thing is there was significant scientific community support for OR. That is not a trivial issue either, uh, because the nature of operational research is, is very different from what we do otherwise. It's uh, driven uh, not by a great idea that somebody has is going to make a, a, a major difference in, in the area that they're working in, but it's driven by the need to solve specific problems, of, in this case the LF programs. And it's carried out not by individual laboratory scientists and researchers, the highly trained, but the highly trained in research, but mostly by the national LF programs. It's undertaken not so much as single experiments done in one location uh, or clever ideas that are followed by uh, in one place, but really they are multi-country efforts with the goal of uh, identifying best practices with uh, significant enough data that WHO can use that data to create new guidance. You can see there's really, there, this is not Nobel Prize winning research. These are not the topics that are going to do it. So it is a sacrifice by the scientific community to uh, uh, support uh, uh, global problem programs. But the successful engagement of the LF program managers with researchers really helped to identify the challenges and priorities. And there were two major meetings in the uh, uh, early 2000s, which is what, uh, three, four, five years after the program had been uh, underway a bit. And uh, th this turned out to be uh, a recipe for much of the work that went forward. And so by 2010 to 2011, those earlier WHO guidelines had been uh, uh, significantly refined. And so there were really new guidelines put out that dealt with uh, the kind of uh, survey, uh, transmission assessment survey, the, the epidemiology, the clinical disease, the vectors, even the, the overall uh, program strategy. Well, but the question was now, is that the end of the need then for operational research? And uh, you obviously know the answer is no. If the programs have an L a phases of mapping, scaling up the MDA, then that period of stopping 
which is actually starts with a, a, a particular survey that must be passed and then repeated that over the next uh, uh, five years uh, twice more. So that there's, this is a long period and then when the, that's when the program ends, then there's the post-program surveillance. So these are the different elements. Uh, and as you'd expect, in the early days, all the programs are starting at the beginning, so the operational needs really are at the early part of things, the initial mapping, the scaling up of MDA, and uh, much of these have now been resolved. Uh, they, these needs were the tools for detecting LF infection, and I'll come back, I'll show this in just a second, but the need to resolve mapping uncertainties, uh, uh, monitoring MDAs in real time, uh, tracking supply chains. These are really nitty gritty little problems. And I'm not going to go into them, but just to say, for example, I'll make a couple of points. One is, let's say, in the new diagnostic tools, the old tool, ICT, was a great thing, but had problems. And it's something new had to be developed. Uh, I'm not going to go into, I just want to show how many countries. It's a simple question but it takes a lot of countries, a lot of replicates to make sure you can make this change without uh, uh, upsetting the, uh, the uh, strategy and what's been working before. But by going to almost a dozen countries, the outcome that the FTS did meet program needs and is now recommended by WHO. That's the kind of outcome this operational research uh, uh, needs. Uh, the mapping uncertainties, if you know about filariasis mapping, it's really every implementation unit or district that you'd be going into, you just sample in a couple of places and if it's positive, the whole district became uh, defined as at risk and positive. So the, it, it, was a, it was a way to bring in uh, many uh, areas that were uh, perhaps marginal, but when, the, uh, when it came time to actually do the work, if, if they were in that prevalence of zero to one percent, because one percent is the cutoff in terms of what's dying out by itself versus uh, uh, needing to be treated, country wanted a confirmatory tool. So basically here you went to the epidemiologist and a confirmatory mapping protocol, LQAS protocol was developed, tested in five countries, and again found to be effective in identifying districts uh, requiring MD, not requiring MDA, and of these five, two of the countries uh, were exactly what they had planned, so there was no change in their uh, map, mapping. But three of the countries actually uh, were able to avoid uh, treating, uh, so that it was a very helpful tool. The issue of monitoring these, every, if you don't have good coverage, that is if you don't have everybody in the population, or at least a per the appropriate percentage, let's say, 80% uh, of the eligible or 65% of the total population. If you don't have coverage, you're not going to get any, any effect of, uh, of the MDA. So people, the, the program managers needed to be able to assess this fast enough so that they could turn around and say, we need to mop up immediately, not wait for four months when a larger survey comes back and then they go back and see what was wrong and try to catch up with it. So, a supervisor's coverage tool, a, a simple uh, rapid test just saying is your work adequate or it was, does this look like it uh, has worked well so far, inadequate or whatever, and it, but it's a very fast thing can be done really in real time. And this supervisor's coverage tool has been a, found to be effective and easy and helpful for these first level supervisors. Uh, and then uh, again, part of the WHO recommended uh, toolkit. This is the tracking MDA uh, supplies. You have all these, you have drugs coming in, you have all sorts of uh, uh, elements, coordinating products coming from different areas. It, it, you needed to be able to track it. Well, it doesn't sound like the most uh, uh, intellectual uh, uh, research, but on the other hand, getting the supply chain forum to define an end-to-end -end collaboration for total supply chain visibility makes all the difference in the world for the success of the program. And if the program isn't successful, all the science that went into it is been, has been wasted. Now, uh, if you go to what's going on today, since most of these others have been talked about have already, we've completed a lot of them, uh, but the OR today, the most exciting thing perhaps is this thing, that hastening an exit strategy for delayed programs. Not everybody started right on time, and uh, not every program works flawlessly. 
so the, the discovery that triple drug therapy, uh, which takes, I don't have all the uh, axes here, but this, uh, these are microfilaria levels, and this is uh, after uh, one year. After two years, they're, they're still down to the same level. And uh, so the, it looks like you can probably get away with only two years of IDA treatment and maybe get rid of the infection. That'll speed up things. And for those who are trying to meet a target of 2020, this could be very helpful. In places in India, it's actually, uh, uh, I should say, well, what's the OR challenge? Well, the problem is that all of the current monitoring and evaluation guidelines are based on programs that lasted more than five years of yearly treatments. Now you're taking it down to two years. That's going to change all the uh, indicators, or at least it, we have to check to make sure that it doesn't change all the indicators. Uh, and uh, to, to, uh, so the operational research becomes a comprehensive protocol looking at all sorts of uh, indicators to identify what's most effective to assess the uh, long-term effectiveness of the triple drug therapy. And a number of in, uh, uh, countries are involved here, including uh, India, and these studies are just beginning. A lot of the, the uh, programs are actually coming to a later stage now. They've gone through this, and we saw in that many countries have even stopped. So the operational research often has shifted towards the late period of the um, of the program life. Uh, again, you're dealing with tools, but the, now you're looking for the best tools to detect LF for the end game. This is when things are almost all gone. You want to be testing for exposure to parasite that you didn't think was going to happen. Antibody assays particularly. Uh, uh, the need for the best strategy to assess this post-MDA period, this stopping period. Because if you have a hot spot and things come up in some areas, they, they, they pass the test uh, statistically saying they're below the threshold. But in fact, there would be a couple of spots that needed to be mopped up. Maybe we need a better strategy, maybe better uh, uh, sampling strategies on this point. Similarly, in the post-program surveillance, how do we know exactly who to test to get the most effective uh, check to be sure that things have not come back. And finally, I think the issue that's pretty much, uh, uh, let's see what I've done here. Yeah, the, the harmonization. Uh, this is one of the opportunities, you know, this is the LF program has people engaged and they have many, many people engaged now. And so there's a lot of activities going on, a lot of surveys that are being done, a lot of things. And there are a lot of opportunities for harmonizing this with other, uh, with other programs, whether the uh, other NTD programs, uh, uh, malaria and LF Im implementation, the health system strengthening through co uh, coordinated surveillance and data capture and management, morbidity management for LF and leprosy. There are lots of things that can be uh, utilized that are shared between this and other programs. So then you can ask the question, well, is there ever an end to the OR needed uh, for program success? And I suppose the answer is if the program is truly successful, you can probably say the, uh, the operational research uh, is uh, not needed anymore. But it's really one of those things where if you have your, uh, your implementation, the, uh, you know, you're going to have a problem. And so you have to come back to the operational to get a solution and then the solution goes as implemented again. There'll be other problems. So there clearly is a cycle that uh, is, uh, tells you you're almost never going to be free of the need for operational research. On the other hand, when you're here, we don't really, we're not really satisfied with the uh, diagnostics that we have uh, for all, at least uh, for uh, all, all situations. And so again, the operational teams want to go back and say, look, translational research, give us some more tools, give us a better strategy than we have. So, and you know, I could take this back and be ridiculous and go back to the basic because we do have to go back to some of the basic issues as well. But clearly, just in operationalizing research, uh, there are these feedbacks that uh, continue to go on. So how do we ensure success for our programs in the future? Well. These are sort of like uh, 
you know, how, how to live well, I suppose. Uh, we need to demand quality performance in all the work. We have to ensure a steady supply of bright minds that are well-trained, well-motivated, well-mentored in all aspects of health science because there are, there are needs for basic researchers. There are needs for translational researchers. There are needs for operational researchers. And all aspects are important. The, uh, in terms of the programs, uh, focus on the operational challenges of ongoing programs and help address those challenges uh, as well as addressing some of the upstream uh, research questions. Fostering interaction between researchers and program managers is really important. And there's something that we have for the neglected tropical diseases called the Coalition for Operational Research in NTDs. And uh, this turns out to be a meeting which has grown to about 400 people uh, last year uh, and uh, a waiting list to come. But basically where people come together dealing with these things and have uh, breakout sessions around different uh, uh, troubling issues and work together as a team to uh, uh, to address these issues. And again, this is uh, uh, provided by the funders, so that's really very special. They wanted this to be happening so that there would be this collaborative interaction. The interaction interact with policy, make, policy makers in the media. We're entrusted with public funds and all the, everything that we do, and we need to report back how effectively uh, we are using them. And this, I think, is really quite important. And then, of course, working in global partnerships uh, and multi-center studies uh, so that the findings can be utilized by WHO to establish global guidelines available uh, to all countries needing them. And it's also very important that we appreciate all of our dedicated partners who continue to support the OR needed to eliminate, for the, in this case, lymphatic filariasis. And that includes ministries of health. It includes the private foundations, uh, or WHO, and the uh, private foundations, the bilateral aid groups, the drug companies that make their donations for these programs to exist, uh, the different uh, national medical uh, research uh, institutes that to support this kind of work. And this is almost my last slide. But I would, now when you look at these last two slides and you look at the attributes there and you think, who might this also refer to? And I think the answer is pretty clear here. And this is the kind of person Dr. Kumaraswamy was. This is, this is the attributes he had and this was the philosophy he had in bringing people together. And in fact, this uh, uh, coalition for operational research in the NTDs, core NTD, uh, has a prize that was established uh, actually just three years ago called the Keelum Prize. This, uh, he was a, uh, a program manager in Burkina Faso, a wonderful person who uh, uh, was also was taken away actually by um, a uh, health issue. Um, so the Core NTD established this uh, prize for uh, individuals who were really special to the global health community. And uh, Dr. Kumaraswamy's genius was not just his achievements, it was rather his ability to provide that spark, that environment, that opportunity for people to come together and work together to achieve great things, both at home in India and at home in the world. And this was the uh, dedication uh, to him uh, in 2016, where everybody came together and it was clear that this was the person that they wanted to be honored. Fortunately, we had his son uh, Samir and daughter Manjusha here seen with uh, uh, Dr. Julie Jacobson of the Gates Foundation who had won the uh, award the previous year and she made the uh, presentation to them at the core NTD meeting in 2016. So finally, all I would say is thank you to VK and Lakshmi for everything that they've given us and the world as you can see uh, through this discussion. So, so now I request our director in charge to hand over the memento to the presenter, Dr. Eric Cortes. Thank you very much.
very lovely. Thank you very much. So now next we move on to the next agenda, which is the releasing of a book written by Dr. Rajshekar on the topic lymphatic filariasis, its correct understanding. So now I request Dr. Eric Cortison to release the book to the people in the dais. Yeah, I have the honor really of um, uh, introducing somebody that you all probably know much better than I do. I've only known uh, Dr. Rajasekharan for a short uh, period of time, but I certainly have to be impressed by all the enthusiasm, vigor, dedication, uh, and hard work that uh, uh, he has uh, put into making uh, both my visit here uh, very pleasant and also uh, to create this wonderful new uh, uh, book that uh, Dr. Uh, Sumia uh, mentioned in her uh, message to, to us all. Dr. Roger Sacron is, uh, is dedicating uh, this book to his uh, uh, mentor and teacher and uh, uh, well-wisher and ever-respected uh, uh, master teacher, Dr. V. Kumar Swamy. Now, Dr. Roger Sacron graduated from uh, Madras Medical College, and it's very interesting because he is a, a uh, uh, has done radiology uh, and he's done clinical pathology beyond that as well as having his PhD uh, and doctor in science as well uh, following on the medical so he's been a very busy person and it's very very uh, impressive and may well be sort of the secret for why this book is, is uh, uh, as nicely put together as it really is. All I can say is uh, uh, I, actually, I imagine you want to say some things about the booklet itself, but it has uh, ten chapters in it by a variety of uh, people who know their filariasis very well, and it's really well put together. I had the opportunity to look at it uh, over the weekend, and uh, it's really a thrill to be able to um, congratulate you on the great job you've done in putting this together. Thank you very much. And I know that it's... You're doing it for others, not for yourself, and I think that's really important uh, as well. So, you do it So, On behalf. Yeah. I have one here already. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Rajshekar to share his thoughts about the book. I want to say, I want to say good evening to all of our friends and scientists who have come here. And I want to say, in, as a Kumar Swami understudy, he took me as his research scholar in this institute. And I'm still continuing to come to this institute and continuing my postdoc work as a honorary capacity. So I want to tell all the young scientists, all the young students who are working here. I, when Dr. Nayan was there as a director, I used to, tell, I used to pray God and tell emotionally with the Sujata Narayan Madam also, Madam, one day our institute is going to get the Nobel Prize. You all know recently, two years before, in Japan, one, one of the fine scientists got the Nobel Prize for the ivermectin. We want to tell you a small note. He found the ivermectin where? He was playing golf. He saw this in the soil, he identified, and he got a Nobel Prize. So I pray my almighty God, my teachers, Professor Trivangram, Professor Parswami, everybody, and my senior, Arjun Rajagopal. When I was joining first year, he was the senior, and he got a Johnston Gold Medal. I used to see the college day, where he got all the medals. Good evening, Madam Geeta Arjun, Madam. They are all my seniors in the college, where we got mentored by them. I am very happy. I am standing in front of all of you emotionally, but all those things are happening because of the power of God. So I want to, I would like to thank all the invitees for attending the release function of the book titled 
current understanding of human lymphatic filariasis. I am deeply indebted to my guide, supervisor and mentor, respected late Dr. V. Kumaraswamy for his guidance from my graduation days and throughout my career. I am indebted to my teacher, Professor K. V. Trivangidam, Emeritus Professor of Medicine, for initiating my interest in the field of clinical, immunological and therapeutic aspects of lymphatic filariasis during my training under him. I am ever indebted to Dr. Eric Hortison, Task Force Chief, USA, for his guidance and inspiration. My special thanks are due to Dr. C. P. Ramachandran of Malaysia for useful interaction with him. My special thanks to Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Madam, Deputy Director General W. H. Geneva. She has been so busy, I want to put it on record. Early morning, she sent at 3 o'clock the message. That means how busy she is, but still she has picking all of us and she sent the message. My thanks to my Professor Dr. Vijay Vijay Shekharan. He was my doctoral committee when I was doing my PhD here. I am grateful to late Dr. Prabhakar, for former director NIRT. I am grateful to Dr. P. R. Narayanan, former director NIRT. I owe my special thanks to Dr. Srikant Tirpati, director in charge NIRT, for extending their support and allowing me to release this book. I owe my special thanks to Dr. M. S. Jauhar for all the support he has rendered for my research studies. In my, I want to again thank the authors of the book. Eric Ottison has been very kind enough and he has been the first author of my book. It's a very prestige for me and to my institute where I studied that Eric gave a chapter for our book. So again, I have to thank Dr. Eric Ottison. My thanks again to authors of our book, Dr. Eric Ottison, sir, Dr. Dr. C. P. Ramachandran, sir, Dr. K. D. Ramaya, sir, my friend and classmate, Dr. G. Monogran. Please stand up, Monogran. He is a plastic surgeon and very close friend of Dr. Kumar Swami and he does the work very silently and he is one of the leading surgeons in India and abroad and he is doing a lot of work in lymphology. My friend and uh, 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 Dr. T.K. Suma from Kerala, Madam, stand up Madam. She has come all the way from Cochin to be with us for this function. And Dr. Suraj Babu was very, very helpful to me when Kumar Swami left me alone. I don't have a head. I have been walking without a head. But so uh, when I come to the institute, Dr. Subhash Babu, my director, Dr. Ramalingam, Dr. Uma, all the people in the immunology department or any department, they used to help me with a helping hand to continue my academic work here. And my, the, Dr. P. K. Srivasta, Dr. Indrani, Dr. Shelley, Dr. Anuradha, Dr. B. Ramalingam, where is he? Stand up, stand up. So he is the a guiding person for all of us and he has taken up a lot of responsibility and uh, doing it sincerely. Dr. Uma Devi Ramalingam and Dr. Priya, that is my daughter, who did a small MCQ questions. And now itself I mean including my daughter young age to study this neglected tropical disease because no one is going to give any salary for us. Even we are work on only honorary capacity. So I am introducing my young blood again to this lymphatic failure as is what Dr. Eric Sir and Dr. Kumar Aswami Sir has already given us the path to trace. I would like to thank all the senior scientists of immunology department, Dr. Alamelu Raja, Dr. Sujata Narayanan, Dr. P. Silvaraj, Dr. Slochana Das, Dr. Kannan, Dr. El Hena. Hena, stand up, ma. I was, when I was doing my PhD, Hena was also my... <laughs> I think we are, I studied with them. So they were all a student of Professor V. Kumar Swami. And uh, uh, Dr. G. Radha for their kind support during my work and postdoctoral days at NART. And Mrs. Shanti from Immunology Department for providing me security assistance. Shanti, madam, please stand up, madam. So she is the only person where she can do everything for a time in a short period. She will never say no, she'll be busy something. But she will never ask me to wait also. She will immediately do it. We really salute you, madam. And your, your chief has trained you well. And you are also dedicated, madam, with the power of God. Also, I'd like to thank all my NIRT family. And I'd like to thank all the senior professors who have come. I, I'm not able to tell by name. I thank uh, um, uh, Bina Thomas, madam. Uh, uh, Rima Matthew. And uh, uh, that madam is not here. Oh, yeah, we also put a uh, remember Dr. Nalini, uh, Madam, 
uh, Manjula Das, madam, and uh, my, uh, my again all my colleagues and friends, young scientists who has assembled here. We can take the long way to go and one day again I am in front of Eric Ortesen and senior Tripathi sir with this blessing. I tell one day our institute is going to get a Nobel Prize. Other thing I want to put it on record, when Tripathi sir and Professor K.V. Trivangram started, no one know about ICMR or all those things. Today the world knows ICMR and every country in the world wanted to come and take a technical expertise and they are willing to invest money to our department, to our country. So we praise uh, our senior Tripathi sir here, Director General, with, with respect to you sir, today the TRC has gone to heights and it is going to be height and we are very proud that all the way you came and being with us this function with Kumara Swami and Dr. KVT gives his special regards to all of you sir. And we once again thank you one, all, one and all for this evening and for a nice evening. I am really happy that I was able to go, go close to Dr. Kumara sir. Thank you very much. A memento, a and he would like to, to give the memento to the authors from Dr. Eric Cortison. So, first, I request Dr. Rashekar to give the memento to Dr. Eric Cortison. Ramaya. Dr. Suma. And, uh, I request the one for Dr. Uh, Anuradha is not here. Okay, on behalf of Anuradha, I think uh, Hannah can take. And one for uh, Mrs. Shanti. And, and I, I'll also get one from. Thank you, sir. And uh, besides this, uh, NIRT also has uh, done another commemorative book on Dr. Kumar Swami. So this book contains uh, the thoughts of uh, everyone who has written uh, after his uh, tragic uh, end and also his scientific publications. So we would also request uh, Dr. Tripathi, uh, uh, sir, to hand out over to Dr. Uh, to release the book. Yes. Now to wrap up the function, we'd like to have the vote of thanks. I request uh, Dr. Omar to deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening to one and all gathered here this evening. We come to the closure of this important occasion in memory and honor of our beloved Dr. Dr. Kumar Swami. As one of his students, 
who has benefited from his mentorship and currently heading the division which he had been a former head. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose this vote of thanks. We would like to take our opportunity to extend our thanks to Dr. Eric Otterson, Director of the Neglected Diseases Support Center Task Force for Global Health. We are delighted to have you, sir, among us today, more importantly as a long-term friend and colleague of our beloved Dr. VK. We express our profound gratitude for delivering us our oration, uh, your oration today on solving the LF problem through, through research. So we appreciate your efforts in taking this as your personal commitment and being here today with us. We express our sincere thanks and gratitude to our former director and former director general ICMR, Dr. S.P. Tripathi, a long-term associate of Dr. Eric Cotterson and Dr. VK for readily agreeing to be here to grace this occasion and to provide his introductory note. Our sincere thanks are also goes to our beloved Madam Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, former director NIRT and director general ICMR and secretary DHR, who had extended her support, goodwill and message through her video recording for this occasion. She continues to be the source of inspiration to guidance and guidance for all of us at NIRT. We are honored and privileged to have Dr. V. K. K. V. Thirvengadam sir's message through the video recording for this occasion. We know that, sir, that your mentorship has guided many of their professional lives, including our mentor, Dr. V. K. We sincerely appreciate the effort he had taken to send his goodwill and message to us on this occasion, though he could not make it to be with us today at NIRT. Thank you very much, sir. We are also extremely delighted to have with us today Dr. P. R. Narayanan, former director NIRT and a good friend and colleague of Dr. V. K. and gracing the occasion and for being always available for suggestions and guidance to all of us at NIRT when needed. We thank all our retired staffs and colleagues of Dr. V. K. who are here with us, who have taken their time to make it today to grace the occasion. We have with us today Dr. Mur Mr. Murali, brother of Dr. V. K. We are greatly honored by your presence today among us. Thank you very much for being here for this occasion. We owe a sincere thanks to all friends of Dr. VK, including Dr. Ramaya, Dr. Subha Asuma, and also our fellow scientists and staff from various department of NIRT and other ICMR institutes for being here today to honor this occasion. We owe a thanks and appreciation to Dr. Rajshekar, one of the many devoted students of Dr. VK, for releasing his book on human lymphatic filiaresis on this occasion. We also would like to thank him for sponsoring the video recording of the proceedings and taking the time and effort to get the video message from Dr. KVT and for always being as one of our well-wishers of NIRT. The time and effort of Dr. Srikanth, our director in charge, Dr. M.S. Jawahar, Dr. Ramlingam and Mrs. Shanti are greatly appreciated for compiling the booklet for Dr. VK on time for this occasion. Thanks to Mr. Lognathan for the electrical and technical support and our director's office, particularly Mr. Krishna Kumar, for his extended support on this occasion. I would also like to thank the volunteers from the immunology department for the various help rendered today for the meeting. Lord, last but not the least, an event of this dimension cannot happen overnight. It requires meticulous planning and execution and an eye for details. We owe a sincere thanks to our director in charge, Dr. Srikant Tripathi for being available to us for this entire throughout and supporting us for this entire event. Once again, a heartfelt thanks to one and all for being with us this evening to make this event a great success. It's been a great pleasure. We look forward to meeting all of you for the next endowment lecture. Thank you. This has uh, been a very big day here at uh, the National Institute for research in tuberculosis, former tuberculosis research center. The, uh, we were here celebrating the life and the accomplishments of uh, the late Dr. V. Kumaraswamy. Uh, Dr. Kumaraswamy uh, was a member of the staff here for almost uh, 30 some years <coughs> and he and I were collaborating in uh, work on filariasis for almost 40 years. He was an outstanding individual because he had that special gift of bringing people together, listening carefully, and uh, being as helpful and enthusiastic about his work and about everybody else's needs as could possibly be. 
the work that he did here was in lymphatic filariasis, or part of the work, and actually he did a great many other things. Part of the work was in lymphatic filariasis, and that work <coughs> uh, done by him and his colleagues uh, here at uh, in Chennai uh, have totally set a new framework for uh, a global program to eliminate lymphatic filariasis, elephantiasis. And <coughs> this program has now uh, been underway since uh, the year 2000, after many of the initial activities had been formulated by uh, Dr. Kumar Swamy and his colleagues uh, uh, and at WHO. And now more than six billion tablets and six billion treatments uh, for lymphatic filariasis have been given worldwide. The idea is that for all those countries that have the infection, uh, everybody who is at risk needs to be treated. And that's exactly what's being done through donation programs and uh, through the energies of uh, <coughs> many ministries of health and their collaborating WHO partners. Much of this has been recorded also in a book that uh, Dr. Uh, Rajasekharan uh, Rajasekharan came out with uh, this past week. He has compiled uh, a book called Human Filariasis, uh, and it it is a compendium of both the scientific literature and also the practical clinical management uh, strategies uh, useful in undertaking uh, control of filariasis today or elimination of the program globally. It's a wonderful achievement and uh, uh, I think that uh, it is something that the WHO will want to latch on to because it records the significant accomplishments made largely by this institution uh, in South India with the uh, many colleagues that it has engaged in in its uh, collaborative work. The key to all this work is partnership, collaboration, multi-center trials, and uh, multi-country interactions. These are the secrets to global health success, and these are the secrets that the uh, global program to eliminate lymphatic filariasis uh, is uh, focused around and has received uh, uh, guidance from the, uh, all of the work done here in South India. Thank you. Today, on 18th June 2018, we had the second Dr. V. Kumar Sami Endowment Lecture by Professor Eric Ottison. Both Dr. Kumar Sami and Dr. Ottison have contributed extensively to the control of uh, lymphatic filariasis, both in Indian setting as well as in several other countries all over the globe. Dr. V. Kumar Sami, we lost him unfortunately on the 4th of March 2016 when a tragic accident led to both loss of his life as well as that of his wife Lakshmi and his mother. But on this day, we remember all the work that has been done by Dr. Kumar Sami and Dr. Ottesen, uh, who together have done extensive research on lymphatic filariasis, and the outcome of the research has definitely contributed in a major effort to control of lymphatic filariasis, not only in India, but in many other parts of the world as well. The work done by these research scientists has been done in the background of all the research that has been conducted uh, all over the world. And uh, this has significantly led to the decrease in lymphatic filariasis in India as well as several other African nations as well. So on this day, let us remember Dr. V, the efforts of Dr. V. Kumar Sami and also his team of researchers, both in NIRT, 
in NIH and CDC and other parts of the globe, WHO and other parts of the globe, uh, who uh, the efforts of whom have led to control of filariasis in several countries in the world. Today we also release the book on lymphatic filariasis. Uh, the book has been authored by several uh, writers and which includes Dr. Eric Ottison, Datto Dr. C. P. Ramchandran, Dr. K. D. Ramaya, Dr. Manogaran, Dr. Suma, Dr. Subhas Babu, Dr. P. K. Srivastava, Dr. Indrani, Dr. Shelley, Dr. Andrada, Dr. Ramlingam, Dr. Uma Devi, and Dr. Priya Ashok. The editor of the book is Dr. Raj Shekhar. I'd like to thank all the scientists who have contributed to the book, and I'm sure this book will go a long way to improve our understanding of this, of this disease. Thank you. I want to say good evening to one and all. It's a second oration done by Dr. Eric Ottison. It's a prestigious oration in our tubercular research center on June 18th. So I thank all the audience and all our senior members and scientists working in this institute and former director P.R. Narayan sir and all of my colleagues and young students and young scientists. It's a memorable day that we are able to work hard and try to follow the footsteps of Dr. V. Kumaraswamy and our senior professors. We want to put it on record, Dr. Swamiya Swaminathan, Deputy Director, WHO, has given her video message for the second oration of Dr. V. Kumaraswamy. Professor K. V. Trivangam, sir, has given his video message and it was very inspiring for the young scientist to follow the future work given by our master teachers. We thank our Almighty God for this nice evening and we thank Eric Ottison who has come all the way to give this lecture to all of us and enlighten the field of lymphatic filariasis in India. And uh, we thank one and all and we thank the entire team who has been working hard for this thing and we also thank our patients who have been uh, helping us to study different trials and all those small details we are put it on record we thank one and all for this evening thank you very much um, I'm Dr. Reema Matthew uh, I retired from uh, NIRT as a deputy director and I've worked with Dr. Kumar Sami for close to 30 years here and uh, if I start at the beginning when I first joined TRC uh, it used to be TRC earlier um, Dr. Kumar Sami would always uh, come first after signing in the register he would walk to my room and he would ask me is everything all right and that was his special way of making me feel comfortable in a new place with the new colleagues and a new research environment. And I, I really am grateful to him for that because it helped me to break into this uh, research environment here uh, at our uh, institute. And uh, uh, of course everybody will talk about how he was so helpful he would never say no to any approach for any uh, help or ask him for his opinion on something and he was ready to give it uh, without um, hesitation and I am grateful to that too. And one of the most important things that I would like to share is that uh, whenever I walked into his room, uh, he would immediately say something, some quip or something to something funny to make me laugh. Of course, I laugh <laughs> very easily. So, uh, and uh, so one fine day I asked him, Kumar Sami, uh, are you releasing any laughing gas in your room when I enter your room? Because I find myself laughing constantly till I leave your room. And that used to be a real high point of my career in uh, TRC, I must say just being happy and I think I owe Dr. Kumar Sami a lot for all his guidance in many aspects of my stay in TRC or NIRT and um, and I really uh, miss him as I'm sure all of us do. Thank you. 
Hi, good afternoon. I am Dr. Suma, Professor of Medicine from Government TD Medical College, Alapura. And uh, I've started working there from 1988. After uh, completing my post-graduation, I joined Alapi Medical College in 1988. And uh, two things which has happened, which has turned my life and uh, uh, resulted in a lot of good things. First is I was posted in the unit of uh, the then professor and head of department, Professor Arkesh and I. And uh, then during my work there, I have met uh, Dr. Kumar Swami and became very closely working together. Professor Arkesh and I started the uh, uh, Filariasis Research Unit with the help of WHO and ICMR in the year 1989. And from the beginning itself, for the activities of the Filariasis Research Unit, the, the, the very, very strong support for us was uh, Kumar Swami sir. Because for every, any, every project when it is starting or in between, or when we are writing up the uh, publications for that, his help was immense. And as you know, you, he is a very gentle man and a very knowledgeable person that not only about filariasis but anything if you have a doubt, even for the computer. Because th those time we got the first time the Mac computers. Even learning that he was uh, very instrumental in uh, telling us. And uh, we used to be very, uh, uh, very friendly to everyone including our staff in the unit. And uh, I remember whenever he comes to Alapi, he'll sit together from morning till evening without even going for his food and he finishes the work and then only going back. And also when he was in Chennai, I remember I, I used to uh, uh, call him uh, frequently if there is any doubt and he never showed any problem of uh, if you interact in even in the middle of the night. So it was a very, very good relationship between uh, Professor Arkishnoy and uh, VK and myself. We could very where we could interact and uh, produce a lot of things and uh, that has turned into research and its results. And uh, we uh, in the uh, Alapi uh, owe a lot to him. And uh, this was... Uh, uh, before uh, before his it, it, it very tragically I remember us uh, uh, Dr. Kumar Swami was with us while doing a training program for the participants from Sri Lanka on mobility management and disability prevention and he was very happy that he is going to uh, Bangalore with his mother to for the uh, his nephew's marriage and uh, it was very shocking for us that within after two days uh, that to know that he has left us now uh, the professor arkish i was a great friend of him and has worked together a lot and uh, he also left us in march 16 2018 so uh, this is now uh, I feel like I have been left out or I have been orphaned because these two people were great strength to me. And uh, working with uh, Dr. Eric Otterson was also a, a great boon for us because even though from, uh, from a long distance I used to discuss it with various aspects with the, uh, over the phone or over emails and I always have been a very, very, uh, 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 very much helping and also inspiring and uh, uh, every aspect of it he will also look into it and help. So it was wonderful that I could work with these three persons and especially Dr. Kumar Swami, he was a very nice gentleman, he was a very knowledgeable person, he was an international figure and in meetings like uh, RPRG and all that, every time if you ha have to have an opinion, uh, it is uh, Dr. Kumar Swami or everybody was looking at it. So I used to say, uh, make fun of that uh, he has to be cloned because uh, such a genius you don't find it and so the cloning may be done so that he'll be available for uh, everyone to answer their questions so uh, this is great that uh, i could uh, i could uh, come close to the this person from whom i have learned a lot it has been a, a good experience and uh, i feel that it has been very premature that he had gone very prematurely he could have been here for some so many years more i pay my respects and tribute to professor kumar, dr v kumar swami thank you i am ramaya kapa i have been associated with dr kumar swami for the past 25 years he has been our uh, guide mentor and uh, helped us you know to implement many research projects and i thank uh, uh, NIRT for organizing this function 
and uh, uh, inviting Dr. Eric to give this second uh, uh, endowment lecture of Dr. V. Kumar Sami's. Uh, uh, we also thank Dr. Raj Sekharan for compiling this book and releasing this book. Thank you, NIRT. Thank you very much.